Hello everyone. Welcome to our new video. Today we're going to talk about a rather unique and mysterious story, about the life of an extraordinary creature that lives in the dark northern depths. A kind of fish that can transform into a bird. A fish named Vast, lives in the darkness of the north. I don't know how many thousand miles long this fish is, but it's huge. It can also turn into a bird, called Rock, whose back is an unknown number of thousand miles broad. When it takes off, its wings look like clouds in the sky. When the seas move, this bird goes to the pool of heaven, which is a dark area in the south. In the Book of Wonders, there are numerous astounding things are written down. It says, when the rock flies to the southern darkness, the waters are stirred up for 3,000 miles, and he rises up in a whirlwind, flying 90,000 miles and not stopping for six months. It looks like the way dust blows around in the heat, below the deep blue of heaven. Is this really its color? Or does it look like this because it is so far away? In reality, the design is the same when viewed from above. If the water is not deep enough, a big boat won't be able to pass through it. If you pour a cup of water into a small hole, it will look like a boat, even if it's just a piece of trash. But, if you try to float the cup on it, it won't move because there isn't enough water to move such a boat. And if there isn't enough wind, the big wings won't be strong enough to hold it up. So that he can rest on the wind, the rock needs 90,000 miles and the strength of the wind below him. Then, with the light of heaven on his back and nothing stopping him, the big bird can keep flying south. A cicada taught a young dove by laughing and saying, I try very hard to fly into an elm or sandalwood tree, but I get pulled back to the ground before I can get there. So what chance does this thing have of getting to 90,000 miles and going south? If someone takes their lunch to the country and comes back in time for dinner, they will be just as full as when they left. Someone going 100 miles needs to bring enough food to last the whole way. And if you move a thousand miles, you have to bring enough food for three months. What are these two getting at? You can't compare how well you understand the small to how well you understand the big. Few years are not the same as a long time. What tells us this? The morning mushroom doesn't know that the moon grows and shrinks. The cicada doesn't know what spring or fall is because its life is so short. To the south of Chu, there is a huge creature for whom 500 years are like spring, and 500 years are like fall. In the past, there was a huge tree named Chun. For Chun, the lengths of spring and fall were each 8,000 years. Still, Peng Tzu Four is the only man who is famous for being very old, which is a pretty sad thing. When Emperor Tang argued with Qi, he brought up a similar point when he said, I am the emperor. There is a dark sea called Heaven's Pool in the dry north. Here is a fish that is a few thousand miles across and who knows how long it is. The name of this thing is Vast. There is also a bird called Rock. Its back is like Mount Tai, and its wings fill the sky. He rises up on a whirlwind 90,000 miles high, rising through the clouds and breaking through the clear blue sky. He then turns to plot his course south, going to the darkness in the south. A dove makes fun of him and asks, Where are you going? I jump up high, but after just a few feet I come back down and land in the trees. And to be honest, that's the best you can hope for when you fly. So where does that thing go? This is what makes the small different from the big. Anyone who can manage the job of one office, act well enough to win over one district, have enough virtue to win over one boss, and is used to running one country thinks of himself in the same way as these creatures. But, Sun Yung Tzu would laugh at someone like that. Even if everyone praised him, he wouldn't do more because of it. Even if everyone in the world said bad things about him, he wouldn't care. 
he knew the difference between the inner and the outer, as well as the limits of honor and shame, but he didn't go any further. He didn't care what other people thought, but there were some limits he couldn't get past. The great Li Tzu could ride the wind and go anywhere without worrying, but he always came back after 15 days. In his search for luck, he didn't stop at anything. Even though he never had to walk anywhere, he still needed a way to get around. If he had instead risen through the naturalness of heaven and earth, traveled on the six elemental forces, and traveled into the unknown and unlimited, he would have had to count on nothing. So goes the saying. The ideal person lacks a sense of self. The spiritual person doesn't have anything to be proud of. Yao, who gave Suyu control of the world, said, There's no point in keeping the torches lit when the sun and moon are up, it's a waste of light. When it starts to rain, it doesn't make much sense to keep watering the ground. If you, great master, took charge of everything under the sky, everything would be fine, but if I keep going, all I can think about, are my failures. Please take over running the whole world. Su Yu said, Sir, you run everything below heaven, and everything below heaven is well run because of you. If I take over from you, sir, won't people think I'm just doing it for the fame? But compared to reality, fame is nothing. I'd be like a visitor, right? The tailor bird builds its nest deep in the bush, but it only uses one branch. The taper drinks from the river hoe, but it only takes what it needs. Go back home, my noble lord, because I don't want to run the land. The cook may not be good at running his kitchen, but that doesn't mean the magician will take over. Qian Wu said to Lin Xu, I was listening to Qi Yu's words. They sounded good, but they didn't mean anything. They went on and on without coming to a point. I was very surprised by his words, which seemed to go on and on like the Milky Way. They were huge exaggerations that had nothing to do with the real world. Lin Xu asked, what was he talking about? He said, far away, there lives a holy man on a mountain called Ku Shi. His skin is like ice and snow, and he acts like a shy virgin. He doesn't eat the five grains. Instead, he survives on wind and dew. He goes up into the air, rides dragons, and goes to places beyond the known world. He has turned holiness into a liquid and uses this to heal everyone which bring full harvests. Now I think this is nonsense and I don't believe such words, Lin Shu replied, of course. You wouldn't ask a person who is blind or deaf to enjoy a beautiful scene or the sounds of drums and bells. But it is possible to be blind and dumb both physically and in a deeper way. Your words prove this, because you talked like a young woman waiting for her turn. This man has so much goodness that he can hold everything and roll it into one. Reform is needed, so you, you idiot, would just ask someone like that to run the kingdom. A man like this can't be hurt by anything. Not even big storms that come from the sky, or a big drought that melts gold and stone then burns mountains and hills. Someone like him could make a yao or shun from the dust, and debris on the ground, but that doesn't worry him. A man from Sung who sold official ceremony hats went to you, but the people there don't need them because they cut their hair and get tattoos. Yao brought peace to the people on land and to the people who lived in the seas. But, when he went to see the four masters on the faraway Kushi mountain, north of the river Fun, he realized that his rule didn't matter. Hui Tzu, told Chuang Tzu, the king of Wei gave me the seeds of an enormous gourd, which I planted. It grew a fruit big enough to hold five bushels of anything, so I used it to hold water, but it was too heavy to carry. I cut it in half so I could make scoops but they were hard to use. Not because they weren't big enough, but because I couldn't use them, so I destroyed them. Dear sir, the problem must be that you don't know how to use big things, said Chuang Tzu. When a traveler heard this,
He offered to pay 100 pieces of gold for the secret. We've been bleaching silk for generations, but we've never made more than a few pieces of gold. Now, in just one morning, we can make a hundred pieces of gold. Said the whole family. Let's do it. So, the traveler learned the secret and went to see the king of Wu. He was having trouble with the way you was. The king of Wu put the pilgrim in charge of the army, and they fought the men of Yu on the water in the middle of winter. They beat the men of Yu badly, and the king of Wu gave the pilgrim a huge estate from the land they took over as a prize. Both times, the cream prevented the hands from getting dry and cracked. One person used this secret to build an estate, but the others only used it to bleach silk. Now, sir, you have a gourd big enough to hold five bushels. Instead of dismissing it as useless, why didn't you use it to make big bottles that could help you float down rivers and lakes? Because, dear sir, you have a lot of straw in your head, Hui Tzu told Chuang Tzu, I have a big tree that most people think is useless. Its stem is so knotted that a carpenter couldn't work on it, and its branches are too twisted to use a square or compass on. So no builder would look at it, even though it is close to the road. Now, sir, your words are like this, too big and useless, so everyone ignores them. Sir, have you never seen a wild cat or a weasel? Ask Chuang Tzu. It waits there, crouched down, and jumps out to the east and west, not afraid to go high or low, until it gets caught in a trap and dies in a net. Again, there's the yak, which is as big as a cloud in the sky. It's big, but that won't help you catch rats. Sir, you have a big tree that you don't know how to use. Why not plant it in the middle of nowhere, where you can go to walk or sleep in its shade? No axe in heaven will ever hit it or cut its life short, because nothing will ever bother something that doesn't matter. This story shows us some important things. First, never think that small things aren't important. Even small things can be very helpful, if we know how to use them. Second, courage and drive can help us get a long way toward our goals. Don't let the fears of other people stop us from going after our dreams. Also, this story reminds us not to get stuck in a search for power, and fame that doesn't have any real value. Sometimes, being simple and enjoying the small things in life can bring more happiness. Last, be a humble person who lives alone. We don't have to look for praise or approval from other people to feel like we have value. We have to look inside ourselves to find real happiness. Once more, thanks for watching this video. We hope you can use these lessons to make your life better. See you in our next show. Keep getting better, and be the best you can be. Salute to